Oh, hey there, people. What's really going on? Like, one of the questions on my COC video was, do I own any other shirts? There you go. Also got my order from Canvape today. Yup. We got uh, some flavoring. Uh, I'm going to make my own juice still. So, we got uh, 30 mil of gummy bear, 30 mil of cake yellow, 30 mil of, what the fuck is this one? Orange Dream Bar, 30 mil of peach, and a 10 mil, so I want to try it out. Um, it's vanilla custard. Just because I want to see how good it is. And it's by Capella. I never buy their flavoring. But anyway, got a bunch of these little syringes. Uh, they come with blunt 18 gauge needles for uh, basically measuring mills. I believe that's in milliliters, right? What are you written in? Oh, dick. I believe that's mills. And, uh, yeah, so it'll make measuring and making juice a fuck lot easier. And we also got some propylene glycol here to thin it out so that it's not as thick. I also bought a new USB cable to use at home for charging cell phones and, you know, other devices and things. So I bought one of these. And I bought myself the Cloudpour friggin' dry herb tank, which I've been dying to check out. So I'm going to do that. You know these cloud pour tanks, they just burn the herb, they don't vaporize it. But honestly, I want to use it on the Vamo to basically smoke dope. That's the basics. For some reason I expected this tank to be as big as a pro tank. I did. Whoops. Guess not. Anyway. Guess we need a battery for the Vamo. So we got a lot of shit now to make some juices, but uh, that's not going to be happening yet because we're missing one key ingredient for juices. Like I said, I have the propylene glycol, but I do not have any vegetable glycerin. just want to get shit off my desk and move it over to where I put all the vape gear and everything because uh, I don't like having a clusterfuck on my desk. I'm getting sick of that. Grab all of my syringes. For mixing, fire those over here for now. And just fire them into the pen holder. Yeah, I gotta do some organizing over here. Holy shit. Fucking mess like you wouldn't believe. So, ah, one of these days. Right now, I just need to get through these next two weeks. Fuck. It's gonna blow. That moment when you could have sworn you had a coffee cup up here. And you can't find it. What the fuck? Oh, whatever. So... Yeah. So I guess on Saturday probably, which will be tomorrow, after work, I'm going to go to um, friggin' Walmart. I'll pick up some vegetable glycerin and probably do a little shopping and pick up some other things and yeah, it'll be awesome. I think while we're at it tomorrow, we're going to pick up some more coffee because uh, I only have two K-cups left. Oh wait, no, there's still more in the cupboard, isn't there? Oh yeah, there is. And this is the one that I bought at Canadian Tire, the uh, Keurigs, the big old dirty box of uh, 30k cups for the whopping price of 20k cups. So, pretty awesome. Oh yeah, coffee. No pubes allowed. Frank's sakes. I've been hearing this bird and it sounds like a bomb dropping. Now the fucker's not going to make the sound. That slut. Like we've all heard of the cheeseburger birds, little chickadees that go cheeseburger every time they freaking want to annoy the shit out of you. But uh, yeah, this one here is like me, me, and I was like, holy shit, and I was doing it nonstop. Sure enough, I turn on the camera, it gets camera shy. Fucking wildlife. Well, people, actually today I got two packages. This one here comes from hashtag hope. That's like the pound symbol in hope. And it's a t-shirt. I'm just going to put you guys down. Oh, hey, wait. No, there's a lot of stuff in there. Okay, I'm going to put you guys down, and we're going to dig through this. And uh, apologize for my eyes. My allergies are going nuts right now. My nose is stuffy. My allergies are going nuts. Hashtag hope it goes away. Um, let's go ahead and crack into this, and I'll show you what's all in here. So I just put the shirt on. This is the t-shirt here, hashtag hope. And what this is all about is... It's a non-profit organization formed by my buddy. Um, I can't remember what his YouTube channel used to be. Uh, it changes so much. He started up another one, but he hasn't dropped videos on it in a while. I can't remember exactly. But anyway, 
enough of that. Um, the site is for people who think that they are a wasted life, that they don't belong on this planet, there's nowhere for them to be, they feel outcasted and start contemplating suicide. That's where this organization comes into play. They basically explain to you that you are not a wasted life and there's all sorts of materials and resources on there to basically help you through whatever is stressing your life out and just making life difficult. They help you get there. And uh, one of my friends saw that I liked the page and went and checked it out and it was exactly what she needed. Exactly what she needed. And they also gave out, um, they gave me stickers. These little, uh, see if I can, there we go. So I'll try and get it so the light doesn't dick it over. Uh, you are not a wasted life. Hashtag hope. So they gave me these. And the same, these are double sided cards. Uh, hashtag hope. Uh... I can't even read that because it's reversed, but hope is not giving up on you. Hashtag hope.ca, facebook.com, hashtag hope. So, there you have her. And on the other side, it reads, you are not a wasted life. And you know, I wish I had these cards. I wish I, I, wish I had this organization about a year ago because, um, honestly, I probably could have used these to give out to certain people who decided that they were a wasted life and shut her down this could have saved them maybe maybe but um you never know brutal stuff to talk about but um yeah pretty friggin sweet shirt only complaint is it's white and in about a couple weeks it's gonna be about as white as this one you see the difference this shirt this not for sale shirt which obviously we're for sale because i'm losing my job um used to be as white as this hashtag hope shirt but uh, no, I'm going to wear this to work today and see what happens and see if anybody makes any comments about it and things and uh, just go from there. But uh, we're going to have to hit the road soon. It's quarter after three and just friggin' have at her. Hashtag hope. Link will be in the description for the Facebook, website, all that shit. Check it. Alrighty, well, it's getting late, so we should probably get out of here. I got to rock a piss, let the dog go for a piss. And then uh, go from there. So let's freaking do this. Alrighty, just let the dog out for a shit. And uh, he's good to go. I'm good to go. We're all good to go. Let's go. Alrighty, people. It's friggin' hot in the car right now. Got the AC on. Gonna crack some windows. And uh, let's get our asses off to work. Looks like a nice sunny blue sky day today. So, and I'm trying something different with the son of a bitchers. I changed the focus to auto and I changed the resolution to 1080p just to see how well they do so let's fucking have at her people so yeah my friend went and contacted uh, my buddy over at hashtag hope and they're gonna publish her uh, her story I'm gonna publish her story so how, how's that for fucking awesome you know my friend's gonna get her story told because she's been through hell and back. Holy, indeed. So when that gets published, I'll uh, let you guys know. And you guys can check that shit out if you want to read on it. But uh, yeah, like anybody out there. And that's the thing is, like, even when my friend Corey committed suicide, like, it was one of those things. The reason why it was a big shocker was no one knew he was that upset. Like I said, I was talking to him a week prior and he was fine. He was talking about vape gear and got himself a new Eldarte and he loved it and wanted to know what my favorite tank was and I told him and he was going to go pick one up the next day and shit and then all of a sudden, three days later, he, he's dead. He killed himself. Like, you know, and if I would have known about this organization back then, if it was around back then, I could have informed him of it. Holy fuck, that looked like a Rickham back there in that, in that van. Fucking Rickham. But I could have uh, informed him of the whole organization and maybe, just maybe, it might have been enough to keep him from doing what he did. But it's kind of too late now and stuff. And yeah. But uh, definitely, anybody out there, if 
feeling depressed, feeling alone, feeling scared, feeling whatever, go check it out. Hashtag hope. It's in the description, you know, and maybe it might be a, enough motivation to pull you through that day, you know, or pull you through your life and, and it might just be what you need. But the guy who runs it is my friend Nick. Uh, he used to have a show on YouTube called The Nick and Devin Show where him and his buddy Devin would basically do like a, a Bob and Doug McKenzie or a Wayne's World type show where they're sitting on a couch. Oh, for fuck's sakes. It's about to cut over, but Rick them in the minivan there. Decided to lane hop. Fucking Rick them in a minivan. Rick them in a minivan. There goes Rick them in his minivan. So. We got to talking at work about all this nonsense uh, with us losing our jobs and stuff. And we submitted a proposal to the union to find out the following of where will we be working? How long do they plan on keeping our jobs? Will our uh, severance at the end of the duration be the same as it is right now? And, um, uh, how much will they be paying us? Because, like, I got a buddy who works for Bell. He's uh, just a technician there. And he's making about 18 an hour. Which I'm not going to say is bad money, but it's a lot less than what I'm making right now. Now, obviously, no matter where I go, if I get a job in the telemarketing field, or in the uh, communications field, or basically field, uh, telephone technician type operation, uh, I know I'm not going to make more than 18 bucks an hour unless I get bumped up to supervisor management. That's a different story. Then you make a lot more money. But uh, just being a floor dick, I know I'm only going to make about 18 to 19 bucks an hour. You know, and I, I can accept that. That's fine. But if I'm going to move, I'm going to move somewhere where I want to go. And we have a bad feeling that relocation is going to happen because they're basically relocating all the customer service reps that stay. They're firing them all off the Timmins. The Timmins uh, customer service. They're, they're not going to keep them in North Bay. And they're going to do the same with the help desk too. And what's really fucking dicked. Well, it's not really dicked. It's just um, it's based on classification. Like, for instance, let's say they offer Bruce the job, but they don't offer me the job. Theoretically, I can bump Bruce because I have more seniority than Bruce does. I don't know why, but everybody thinks Bruce is like my boss. And meanwhile, he has less seniority than I do. Like, I've been there 13 years. Bruce has been there seven. You know? Like, the only reason why I'm working weekends right now is because two people on the weekends are off. Therefore, I get fucked over being the lowest guy at the top five that I have to work the weekend. Which, you know what? Whatever. It's not that big of a deal. The weekends are fucking boring as hell. They're, they're always dead. And like, you maybe do 20 calls on a Saturday, combine both shifts. And that's on a bad day. Well, except when Bruce and I used to work weekends together. Because when we worked together, everything always fucking broke. You know, the mail server would shit the bed, or the fucking... One of the routers would just, like, randomly die somewhere, causing some major lag, or... Or just a, a farmer would pull up a fiber... Uh, a fucking fiber line, and rip that some bitch in half and then you know in come the calls like non-stop all day so you know it was pretty random at times is what would happen but uh pretty pretty shitty too oh, i'm not using my fogger today i'm using the uh the pug one dart the elvt but i got a dirty old k fun onto it it's not too bad not too bad I'm uh, vaping some electronic cigarettes, Canada, Twizzlers, Twizzlers into it. Fuck, you should have called it nibs. Mwah. Twizzler, nibs, same thing anyway, not a big deal. But it tastes like those little fucking bite-sized nibs you buy at like the, the corner store or movie theaters and stuff. It's really good. My buddy actually went to the theater in, uh, in Guelph. And he's vaping now, and he's in the theater, and he's fucking blowing huge clouds. And he got kicked out. Got kicked out because he was uh, he was right in the middle of the uh, the thing, and he's like blowing these huge fucking echo clouds into the sky, and people behind him couldn't see, so they they fucking ratted him out. And I don't blame them because you know 
Like, if you're going to vape in public places, be fucking discreet about it. Keep the vapor low. Don't take massive hauls. Don't fucking throw clouds up in the air to block people's vision because you're trying to be cool. All you're doing is being a dick. Like, me blowing huge clouds at home, not a big deal. The only person I'm annoying is myself when I can't see shit. But for people in a public location, like, I'm in the middle of Canadian Tire, and they're just, like, fucking hooping massive clouds... You're just making a case for them to ban this shit. Like, you gotta stop. But, you know, if you take, like, a little... Like, I do it in Walmart. I'll have my... my, my This one here, the one that sits around my neck. And I'll, I'll uh... Take little hits, and... I don't blow clouds like that. I'll hold it in for at least a good... 10, 15 seconds. And then when I exhale, there's next to nothing there for vapor. So, it's barely even noticeable. Fucking eco-peds. But, yeah, like... If you be an annoying dick about the vaping, you're going to get busted and you're going to get in big shit. Like, yeah, they can't nail you with the smoking fine unless on the door it says no smoking, no electronic cigarettes. If they don't specify right there on the doorway that it's illegal to use them inside, then all they can do is give you a warning and ask you to leave. Or give you a warning and tell you to cut it and fuck out, but... Now, I've vaped a couple times in some public places, and uh, if you do it discreetly, nobody fucking knows. As long as they don't watch you bring the freaking dart to your mouth. But once you've already inhaled, if you uh, basically hold it in for a little bit of time, you can uh, you can usually disperse the fog so it's not such a fucking blatant blast. You know, you don't have to be a dick about it. But then there's people who chase clouds and just got to fucking show off and it's like, God, you got to stop. Like, it's fun in games, you know, if like we're all over at my house and we're all vaping together and I decide to bust out the cloud blowing rigs, everybody busts out the cloud blowing rigs and the objective is to fog up my house, cool. You know, awesome. But just to be in a public place and do that just to annoy the fuck out of people, not so awesome. Kind of dickish. Kind of very dickish. Oh, that's a fucking motorbike. Jesus Christ. Almost took it out. I should have just fucking ended it. Oh well. And yeah, we're good. Alright guys, well, I'm gonna call her quits for now. Pretty much time to head inside anyway and go see what the fuck's really going on. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna head inside and see what the fuck's really going on and go from there. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. And until next time, people, have hope.